So hello and welcome back again all of my star pupils. So tonight what we are doing is we are actually going to be talking about the spreads. I've been wanting to put this video out there for a while only because things have been so busy and stuff is going on and I figured that now would be a good time to do that. So we're going to talk a little bit about in the tarot spreads. What does that look like? What are some decks that you can use to start reading cards if that's something that you're into? Um, that type of thing. So what we used to do some of the cards before is we used something called the Rider Weight Tarot and I will be linking that down below. The White Rider Weight Tarot is just, you know, your typical tarot card you can use. I just wanted to let you guys know that because I had a lot of Instagram questions about, well, what type of deck is it and what do we use and things like that. So I just wanted to tell you guys you can use the Rider Weight Tarot. These are all so good. These are just, these are very old, you guys. These are actually my grandmother's deck. Um, these are tarot cards that were that you can basically use, but they have different pictures on them. But they are essentially still the same. Um, the tarot, you can use these as well. I'm probably going to use these tonight only to kind of demonstrate a few things, and then I'm going to kind of use the rider weight a little bit too to describe about spreads. So here's the thing, you guys, the camera angles are going to be a little bit different in this video because what I'm going to do is I'm going to shuffle the cards. I'm going to show you guys a little bit about the spreads that I like to use. Um, I'm going to stop the video and then show you those. So we're going to be talking about primarily three very important spreads, and we're going to kind of go through a card reading, a mock card reading for three different quarants. Um, I'm going to give you the ages, like um, sometimes I'll do the genders, that type of thing. It might help, um, or we can just do it based on just having a corn who's a specific age, that type of thing, just so that you guys can get a sense of who you're talking to, who's identifying as the corn, um, what you're kind of looking for with the questions or anything like that. And these are just going to be mock readings. So we're going to start with the first spread, which I always use to start in tarot readings. You don't have to do this spread, but I really, really like it because I feel like it gives you a lot of information in a very, very short amount of time. And also, too, you can give a lot of information to the quarant, so it's very, very helpful. So that is called the Celtic Cross. So the Celtic Cross is one of those older spreads, you guys, that is used. Not a lot of tarot readers will use that type of spread anymore. It's kind of an older version. To use, a lot of people will use circles. They'll use just random laying of the cards. I like to do spreads because I feel like it's a little bit more organized as a tarot reader and I feel like you're not losing the quarant in what you're talking about sometimes. So we're going to start with the first one, which is the Celtic Cross. The second one that we're going to do is the daily reading, which the daily readings are very much easy because all you're doing is you're pulling three question cards that go along with the question that you asked and then you're pulling three clarifiers. So I like to do that. That is a daily reading that you can pretty much do every single day. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to do in our third spread, the past, present, and the future. And that is also a good spread to use if you have a quorum who has questions about, again, the past, present, or the future. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shuffle the cards really, really quickly, get those all organized. Then I'm going to turn the camera angle around so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, but then I'm going to kind of walk you through the first card reading. So the first card reading again that we're going to be doing is the Celtic Cross. This is going to be for a quarant who is in their middle age, which we can say that that's from 40 to 50, um, 40 to 55 at least. The, you know, this person's kind of in the middle age of their life. Um, it's so funny because the cards... I'm so sorry about that. The cards went everywhere, you guys, when I said that. So maybe the universe is like, yes, do that reading. Um, this person's also going to be female. Now, I will say this in particular. It's, it's not important. 
you guys to know the gender, to know that kind of stuff. It is important for energies. So we're going to talk about that a little bit in these card spreads, okay? I just want to put that disclaimer out there. I'm just using that to show and to demonstrate because half of the time you're going to be getting feminine and masculine energies in your card readings. So that's kind of the first person that we're going to be reading for. The second quarant that we're going to be reading for is a person like much like yourself. It can be whoever it is. It can be yourself. It can be a neighbor. It can be a sister, brother, whoever you're reading a daily reading for. And then the past and present is going to be for someone who is in either their late teens, early 20s. They're looking for the past, the present, and the future. What is going on? So I'm going to um, stop the video really quick, and then I'm going to do um, the spread so you guys can kind of see that. So we will be back with you soon. Okay, you guys, so we are back. So this is going to be a little bit wobbly, but I'm going to try and do the best that I can. Um, I am going to be taking these this card deck that I just shuffled, you guys, okay? And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to, for the Celtic Cross that we're starting, I'm going to do it three card piles from the left, which I usually do this to separate out the decks, but also too with the Celtic Cross, you can choose which one of these decks that you really, really want to use. So for this specific quarant who we said was middle age and female, we are going to be asking the quarant to place their hand over all three of the cards and basically choose which pile that they want. It gives the quarant a chance to center themselves, you guys, and they can actually see which three type of cards that they would like. So what I'm going to go with is I'm going to demonstrate with this card. So say that this, the quarant picked this deck. So we're going to essentially get rid of these. Okay. And now we're going to take this deck. So what you're going to do is you're going to go like this. The Celtic cross always starts with a card in the middle, a card over it, a card beneath it, a card above it, you guys. And then there is a card that's to the side, another card that's to the side. And we're going to probably run out of room here, you guys, because I got my little table. And then you're going to do four cards up the side this way. I'm going to actually move this a little bit, you guys. And you guys can see my fancy green rug there. Don't even laugh at me, you guys. I know that y'all like fancy colors. I'm a Leo, so I told you I'm extra. Okay, so this is basically what the Celtic cross is going to look like. So in other words, this is what we basically have for the Celtic cross. So we are going to start and talk a little bit about what each of these cards mean. So we have the middle, essentially, okay? So again, I'm gonna try and do this without moving the camera too much, okay? So essentially what's going on here is we have the middle. So this card was, th this represents you guys in the Celtic cross, the present. So all of these cards represent the present. This card represents the past. This represents three to six months in the present time. All of these cards represent the future, okay? Just so that you guys understand that. So for here, we basically have the six of wands and we also have the, excuse me, you guys, we have the nine of wands and we have the six of wands. So what this tells me clearly is that in for this quarant, whatever they had asked their question about, that they are talking about um, victories with any type of creative pursuits, any type of hardships that they have been going through, they are basically carrying things and building things with the nine of wands. So they are working hard with their troubles, working hard to kind of, you know, convert themselves to a different way of thinking to a different way of being with their creative suits. I'm not gonna get too much into the meaning of the cards, you guys, because we did that before. We have the Six of Wands. Now, what's interesting about this is the Six of Wands in this Celtic cross, you guys, 
and I'm just going to show it a little bit here. In this Celtic cross, this is basically crossing over the Nine of Wands. So essentially, this is where the quarant is at presently, at present time. So this is crossing over it. Then you have the Six of Wands, which is kind of over this whole situation. So that Six of Wands there, you guys, holds the key to what is basically going on in this card reading. So depending on what the cards mean, you can simply tell the quarant this is what they're what we're looking at this is what is over the issue now we talk about this card right here you guys this is what is beneath the quarant which we have currently here the page of cups which is interesting because this is a message of emotion this is a message of feeling that is beneath all of this so in this situation you guys whatever this present situation is this is beneath what is going on here so these both here are circumstances for this action we have this card here now this person has the five of wands the six of wands we have the nine of wands so there's clearly in this reading for this quarant a lot of wands energy a lot of fire energy is happening here a lot of emotions a lot of things that you can clearly tell with the five of wands of the gossip the arguing um this is basically what we like to call the crowning above this so these two cards are circumstances now this with the page of cups could indicate that the core is going to get a message about emotions a message about sensitivity a message about how to avoid kind of all of these issues or hardships that are going on you guys so we also have the past. Now, what's interesting about this is clearly we can see this is the Ace of Cups right here. So what is interesting about this is that we have the Ace of Cups. We have the Page of Cups. Now, this could mean that in the past, this person had a new beginning sometime in the spring in regards to emotions, in regards to what the future holds, in regards to um, their emotional sensitivities, or in regards to having anything to do with the heart emotions and maybe this past brought up brought about everything that's going on right here so you can kind of point to the quarant and tell them that this past here has gotten them to this point wherever this point basically is so again you guys we have the past we have the beneath card here we have the crown card or the crowning of the circumstance and what's crossing over that circumstance or the question the initial question that the quorum asks can be referred to in this first card Okay, so now we have the future card, which clearly you could see here is the two of cups, which is clearly a marriage. So this is the future that is kind of leading into, we're talking three to six months approximately here. We're talking maybe, I don't know, it could be anywhere from two to six years in this line, depending on what the quorum is asking. But this card is basically demonstrating that there is an issue with marriage there is an issue going on in the future with matrimony with things that are going on like anything having to do with the two of cups is in the near future the quarant is kind of on this path in other words you guys so this card's very interesting this is basically what the quarant thinks of themselves what others think of the quarant, the hardships in the reading in the Celtic cross, and then the outcome is the last card. So basically what's interesting is the quarant thinks of themselves, you guys, in, in a way that is just the 10, we got the 10 of um, wands here, unless I miscounted. Yes, okay, so we have the Ten of Wands here. See, this is the other thing, you guys, too. It's just good to kind of... Five, six, seven, eight. I'm sorry. So we have the eight of wands here. We have the six of wands. This is actually the nine of wands. So this is a person who is going from the eight of wands 
to they're thinking that they have this basically sewed up in them the bag they have the nine of wands they are going through a lot of hardships right now you guys Clearly in this reading with the Celtic cross, we can just discern one thing about the Quran. They have a ton of emotional things going on. They also have a lot of hardships, a lot of things and creative pursuits that they are working towards. So they view themselves as carrying a lot of the burdens with this specific card, you guys. So that is, again, the Nine of Wands. Now, how others see them or what others see them in this predicament. We got the 10 of wands here. So people are seeing the corn. Again, we got a lot of wands, wands energy here, you guys, a lot of fire energy. So people are seeing the corn is basically taking all these hardships, rolling with them, overcoming. And that also too may be hard for the corn, you guys, because it might be hard for them to carry all those burdens. Again, with these card readings, you really got to discern who your quarant is, you guys. And you really, really have to kind of look at who is this person? What do they do? You know, kind of clear your mind during these card readings to kind of open up a little bit more to the quarant and less about yourself. Tap into this person. What are they feeling? So we have the six of cups here. We also have, now this is the hardship. This is what this person is having a hard time dealing with. The six of cups here. Then we finally have the outcome, which is basically the seven of cups. So we can see again with the hardship we can see with the emotion, you guys. We can clearly see that. So you can go through the whole card reading with the Celtic cross if you know the, the issues with the cards, if you know the quarant, if you know basically the question that they're asking, how does it end? And again, this is a very basic reading. So we have the past, the, the outcome, excuse me, the present. This is the question. This is what is over the question, beneath the question, crowning the question. Question, um, the near future, and we have what the quarant thinks of themselves, what others think. We have the hardship and we have the outcome, you guys. So that is the Celtic cross. Now, here's the other thing I like to do in my card readings. You don't always have to do this for a quarant because the quarant's getting a lot of information. You can ask the quarant in regards to this question, what would you like to have the outcome be? And I call this simply, guys, a wish card. This is what the quarant is picking as their wish at the beginning of the reading. They are not to read this card at the beginning. You're supposed to go through this whole entire Celtic cross situation here with the reading. Then you basically tell the quarant what is your wish. So in this case, what the quarant wish out of this question is the three of pentacles. You guys can choose to do a wish card in your readings, but you do not have to, just so that you know that. Um, but essentially, you guys, this is the Celtic cross. I'm going to um, switch the camera off and then put it to the daily reading and we're going to use some of the Rider Waite tarot, okay? So we'll be right back with you. Okay, you guys, so we're back with, this is the daily card reading. You guys, I didn't want to do all the shuffling on camera because it's too much for me to hold the camera that I currently have and to talk at the same time. So I just wanted to demonstrate this. So a couple different things with the daily card readings that you guys can do. You can do this for yourself. You can do this for another person. Doesn't matter. Basically, you're going to want to need one tarot deck, a regular standard tarot deck. You can then also use Use two types of cards. You can use regular oracle cards like we have here, or you can use mini message cards. They call them clarifying cards, you guys. So for the daily readings, what I like to do, and you guys have seen this on my Instagram, is I like to have the tarot here as just, and you can do this reversed, you can do it upright. We're just going to do it upright for the sake of the video. You can do it however you want to. So basically, we can discern in this daily reading that you're going to pick out three cards. Usually I do three because three is a very spiritual number. So we have the hangman, which denotes that today could be a new beginning of some kind. It can be, you know, a new way of thinking, a new um, creative pursuit. It can be something that's new and different. I could see here with the King of Wands that the person is feeling very, very um, empowered today. They're feeling very, very um, 
uh, with their with their hardships or their creative pursuits, they are overcoming a lot. I can see also too with the Five of Pentacles that this person might be struggling today with some type of money pursuit. They might be feeling like they've been left out of the left out in the cold, essentially with a career pursuit, um, you know, or with friends or family. So maybe they're getting a little bit hot headed because of this. Again, the cards can determine pretty much whatever you want. You guys, it's just the fact that you have to read them based upon what you're seeing. This can also mean that maybe a person lost their job recently. Maybe they're not making as much material pursuits as they'd like. So then we have the oracle cards, you guys. So what's interesting is we have the moon and it says you will be guided through darkness. The moon also too is a tarot card, which a lot of times we can't always see what happens, but it is determinable by what our pursuits are in the future. So this has to do with the new beginning. Um, again, we will see that way through the darkness. Now with the King of Wands, we have the stars. Was It was basically meaning a long journey brings rewards. So maybe this person is, is going towards a different path, maybe in their career, maybe within a relationship. And finally, we have air, the air element, which which is, of course, Gemini, Libra, or, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank, you guys, Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. So anybody who maybe knows that person, maybe this person is having an issue with an Aquarius, a Libra, or a Gemini. And this is seek a union of mind and spirit. And guys, clearly with the Five of Pentacles, the divorce card, we can see that there is that separation. So maybe it's just telling you for the daily reading to kind of get in with your mind and spirit. But again, this is just something to do daily every day single day. So you can clearly do this if you would like to, um, you know, just to give yourself a daily reading. What is this going to look like for the day? Um, you can just use the tarot if you like. You can use the oracle cards and the clarifying message cards. You can do pretty much whatever spread you'd like. It's just determining what the meanings are for what you're reading, you guys. So that's basically a daily reading, um, just very short, simple, sweet, and to the point. The Celtic cross is a little bit more different for divination purposes. That's a little bit more involved. Um, again, I'm not going to go through the meaning of the card, you guys, because we've already done that in my previous previous videos, so definitely check those out if you have not seen them. I'm going to come back with the past, present, and future spread, and I will be right back with you guys. Okay, you guys. So this is the past, present, and future spread. Now, I'm just going to give a disclaimer. This is a spread that I typically do. I know that a lot of card readers do their past, present, and future readings a little differently. Again, you guys, I'm, I want to make this disclaimer. You can do these spreads any way you see fit. Basically, here's my whole thing. Spirit is going to speak to you regardless of what you're doing. And also, too, it is very, very important to make sure that you are comfortable with the spread that you're doing. You don't want to do anything that's too elaborate if you are not comfortable with that specific situation. So I just want to make that abundantly clear for every person. You can do these spreads in any way you see fit, shape, or whatever to do, but just make sure it's something that you're comfortable with and that you are going to be using for a period of time. So we have our past, our present, and our future. Why do I do it this way? Well, the three cards are three indicators of the past. The three cards is very significant because it gives me as the reader an idea as to what happened to this person in the past. What happened to this person currently that's going on in the in the present? We have the two cards. Now, with the future, we only want the one card, and I'll explain why. Because, you guys, with the future, it's very hard to determine. If anyone is going to DM me, sir, make a comment stating that they are, they are God, the universe, whatever, I'm going to be a little bit concerned, you guys. We 
do not know what the future holds for us, which is why in the past, present, and future readings, I only do one card for the future because guess what? We are not crystal ball readers. We do not know exactly what the future could determine because it's based upon free will. It's based upon spirituality. It is always based upon what the current feels is necessary for their own life. You guys are just simply giving advice. You are giving tokens and pieces of information from spirit, from universe. You are not here to control the quarant. You are not here to make the quarant think any type of way in these card readings. That is specifically for the universe and the quarant. What you are doing as the reader, you guys, is you are simply just displaying to the quarant what is going on what you are seeing is either a spiritual advisor a psychic a medium a divinatory person you can even be a witch and practice and use these you know to kind of tell the quarant what is happening that type of thing but you cannot make the quarant make certain decisions you guys i just want to send that disclaimer out there you know we'd like to say that we're miracle workers for the good not trying to control other people in these situations so let's start with the past it shows me right off right that there is the son this person had a very very happy home life they had a happy childhood probably the moon also indicates to me that this person in the past possibly was not able to discern what was really going on from the truth because obviously as we see with moon the pisces and the scorpio energy things can get extremely clouded Things are not always as clear as we'd like to see them. So this clearly can indicate to me that the reader um, can say to the quarant, you know, maybe you had a childhood that was both good and negative. You have both that light and that shadow energy. You could have had a past um, relationship, marriage, friendship, whatever the situation was, that some of it was light and some of it was dark because we clearly can see the temperance card there, you guys. We clearly can see that the quarant has had some issues with trying to balance out these two energies in the past, the light and the dark. So that was the past. We go to the present. What is the quarant feeling right now? Excuse my mess on the floor, you guys. Listen, we're just trying to make this work right now. So in the present, you guys, you can discern that the quarant is definitely going through a lot of hardships having to do with the world, which we can clearly indicate that this has to do on the 3D realm. Remember I told you guys, Wheel of Fortune is universe playing with the quarant in the sense that it is turning the wheel for the quarant. That is all spirit. The world is all 3D. It's all the 3D plane. It's all the human world. It's people. It's places. It's things that the quarant is dealing with on a 3D level, not on a 5D level with the spirituality. So just keep that in mind. We have judgment along with temperance which I'm not surprised here so we have in the past the quorum basically balancing stuff out or attempting to now they are basically either passing judgment trying to get through some type of judgment it could be a ruling you guys it could be a divorce it could be a marriage it could be anything that is pertaining to to the world so again you can also pull some clarifiers you guys if you need to with the past present and future readings the past present and future readings are oftentimes very vague you guys the, the past present and future readings are really for much more stronger card readers stronger psychics and and again i've seen i've seen psychic mediums who have used the past present and future readings you guys and they will just lay cards down because they are just getting that information from spirit that oftentimes happens too i am just showing you guys the bare bones of the spreads of some of the spreads that you may see now here's the other disclaimer i'm going to say i am not every tarot card reader and every psychic you guys might not see every single card reader do this every card reader has specific things that they do for their hearts they have specific things that they do that bring them closer to spirit I am no different. I do things a little bit differently so that it's easier for you guys to understand. But nonetheless, just because you're getting a different card reading from a different psychic, a different medium does not make it incorrect, you guys. I just want you guys to be more educated on the different spreads so that you can 
kind of get an idea if you want to read cards for yourself or for someone else, okay? So that was the present. This is what they're dealing with. Now, the future, this is interesting, you guys, because we pulled the fool. Now, what I've talked about with the fool before is it is the zero. It is the nothing. It is the void card for the major arcana, as we talked about before. Now, this clearly is indicating that the quarren is going to go on a new adventure. They are going to go on a new beginning. The problem with the quarren is, is the quarren is looking at this through rose-colored glasses. They, if they are not careful, can go off the cliff here and take this cute little doggy with them, which you don't want that. So you want to tell the quarren they need to keep their eyes open. They need to keep their spirit open. They need to make this new decision in a happiness and in a light, but proceed with caution. Now, I'm also going to mention this too. Now, you can pull clarifiers. You can even do this if you would like to kind of get an indicator, okay, this was the past. How far back was this the past? Where is it going into the present? You can also pull a clarifier over here to go from the present to the future. Again, you guys, it's completely up to you. If you are strong enough as a card reader to pull these cards to get from, bam, the past, what led to the past, bam, what led to the present, bam, what led to the future. You know what I mean? Like, you know, put some, put some spin on it if that's what you want to do. And if you are strong enough to read the cards, you can easily do that. If you are not comfortable with reading um, some of the clarifiers, that's okay too. You can simply just do a past, a present, and a future reading. So I will be right back with you guys um, so that we can discuss a little bit more about how to prepare for cards readings. Okay, all my star people. So I hope that you guys at least gained a little bit of knowledge um, with the Celtic cross spread with the past present and future spread and with the daily card reading spread. I did kind of go through those a little bit quickly, you guys, only because of the fact that I do not want to hinder any person's psychic ability, any person's ability to do their own card spreads. I am just giving you guys some ideas, some of my star pupils, because again, you guys have been messaging me saying, well, what kind of spreads? I really don't know what to use. I'm not even sure what type of tarot cards to use. Again, this is for your own benefit. It's for what you believe in your heart, you guys, you need to do with the tarot and the spreads. I, The tarot is very close to my heart, you guys, because I feel feel like a person should be able to choose what cards they want to read, what speaks to them, what goes out there. You know, that's why I wanted to spend a little bit of one-on-one on the tarot, only because the tarot can be confusing for some people. My advice is also to any of my star pupils, get out there, take some classes, you know, go to spiritual leaders, go to people who you trust, go to mentors who you can speak with about getting different tarot cards, starting with be with beginner decks. I mean, there's also two online, you can get a lot of different cards and things like that. You know, this channel, I will definitely link some down below if you guys need some ideas. But with the spreads, if you guys do want to start with either the Celtic Cross, the daily reading, or you can also do the past, present, and future, those are great spreads to start with, you guys. You know, some of you might be psychic medium and might not need the spreads. You might just need the cards as clarifiers. Um, others of you might be more into the Oracle cards and I can kind of describe that in my Oracle 101 video that I'm going to do a little bit later on this channel to kind of explain that to you guys. But again, like I said, pick any of the spreads that you feel comfortable with doing, um, you know, that you feel is going to benefit you or the core in some type of way, the person that you're reading for. And as always, do what you feel is best in your heart. If you're not comfortable with something, you guys don't start it just because you think that you can read. You know, this is a very spiritual practice. I know that a lot of people will say, well, you know, anybody can do this. There is hundreds, thousands of YouTube videos out there. There is this, there's that. Well, here's the problem with that. It kind of loses its 
lost her in the sense that it loses a part of you. The, the spirit and universe is connected to everything and everyone. If you keep making it gimmicky for people, then it's going to become in a way where it is not spiritually touching the soul. It is not helping your quarants when you do card readings, you know, because here's my whole thing. You can put up anything you want to on YouTube. You can, you can put up anything. You can, you can say that you're a card reader, but to be a good card reader to be, you know, and I'm going to preach a little bit, you guys, I'm sorry, you know, I'm getting on my soapbox, you know, comment down below if you're like, come on, Desi, like get, get, get off the soapbox. Now I'm just going to say this because I'm so passionate about tarot. And I think that there are certain people who can do tarot great. And there are certain people who can't. And I think it's because like you want to spread the word to people. You want to go out there and you want to do what you do. That's completely fine. But be genuine. You will instantly tell if you are a seasoned card reader, even like myself, you will instantly tell in an hour on YouTube who is good and who isn't. And that's because you've been doing it for a while. So that's why I say you guys find uh, decks you like, find spreads that you like that speak to you and speak to your soul. Find people who you know that you can trust, good card readers. Um, You know, on YouTube, there is a bunch of different card readers that are on there that I trust, that I know that these people know what they're talking about because I'm educated in it and I know some certain things. So I just want everybody to be clear on that, that yes, anybody can read tarot. But not everybody can speak to the universe and spirit while reading tarot. So that is a very key thing to keep in mind, you guys. There is a difference between an actual psychic medium, tarot card reader, whatever you want to call them, and what I'd like to basically call a charlotte and a person who's just going to tell you what you want to hear for the sake of a card reading. So please, my star pupils, don't fall into that. There's a lot of people out there who claim that they have these these type of gifts and they just don't. So do what you feel is right. Do what you feel speaks to you and the rest is history. I'm going to move on from my soapbox now. Everybody's going to be like commenting down below being like, okay, we're done with this woman. Please don't be done with this channel. Comment down below, like, and subscribe as always. I love you guys. That's the reason why I'm passionate about this and why I try to spread the word out for people who may be uneducated or maybe are afraid of this type of thing. Um, you know, just to try to spread the wisdom out there, you guys, and the goodness. So here's what we're going to talk about. Very important how to prepare for a card reading what should you do as the reader and what should you expect of the quorum I'm going to be very clear on this you guys you are when you are reading cards it is a very spiritual thing this is not something that's to be taken lightly it is to be taken with a grain of salt okay if you have a quorum who is like I would like to know the winning lottery numbers well wouldn't we all quorum okay but that is not going to happen you need to set realistic expectations for the quarant. The quarant can't be coming to you thinking that you are just going to know their future husband, wife, spouse, whatever the story. If you're one of those people, please comment down below if you know one of those people, because I'd like to meet one of those people, quite frankly, um, who <laughs> maybe is that good to know that. But we need to set realistic expectations for the quarant. What do what can you as the reader discern for the quarant? What what are kind of is your card reading style? I think that every tarot card reader should be open with their quarant, period. End of story. You're not here to hide anything from the quarant. You're not here to trick the quarant into thinking something that isn't true is basically the first step to a good card read. The second step, you guys, is to make sure that you tell the quarant not necessarily what they need to hear, but what they should hear. And be very honest with the quorum and tell them that this is a truth, that you want the quorum to be successful and to be happy with the card reading if 
They want to hear the truth. Whatever the truth may be of what you're seeing psychically, spiritually, or otherwise. If the quarant's not going to be into hearing the truth, then you need to tell them that it would be in their best interest to complete the card reading at another time if they are not spiritually well aware of themselves or well aware of what they're feeling. So that is the second rule. Always make sure that you are telling the quarant the truth of what they need to know. The third thing with tarot card reading is very important, you guys. Do not fluff up the reading. So this is what I mean. You have a quarant who's coming to you and is like, listen, I want to get married next year. I want to know who that person is, what they look like, and I want them to have a lot of money. So show me the cards and see if that's in the cards. Okay, here's the situation. You can basically read to that person, but be very clear with that person that, hey, listen, you are not going to give them what that person looks like. Because here's the thing, you guys, you may be psychic, you may be a medium, you may be a tarot card reader, but does any Anybody really know because here's the thing you could be you know supposed to marry you know the guy who was the good-looking banker who has all the money well you go to the grocery store and you smash carts into someone else who ends up being your husband like let's be honest or wife or whatever you guys it's just an example but that's my whole point you don't want to fluff up these readings to give the reader so much hope into one action because the universe has a sense of humor you guys you may go into it one way thinking okay this is what's happening and bam, the universe is like, ha, 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 let's laugh at this person. Let's throw this into the pile. And it becomes a situation where you were meant to karmically have that happen to you and you didn't even know it. So that's why as a card reader, it's important not to fluff up these readings, not to fluff up things that you may not know the answer to. And you may very well be honest with the court and say, I don't have the answer of what that person looks like I don't give out names to that to that situation because I don't know we we won't know I can give you ideas and circumstances of how you're going to be meeting this person but I cannot tell you specifically who that person is what they look like what their birth certificate says what their social security number is what their blood type is I don't know. I can't tell you that. So again, be careful with the fluff. And the fourth and final thing, you guys, that is very important for tarot card readers, star pupils, repeat this to yourself. You are coming to these readings out of love and light. You are never coming to these readings out of darkness, out of, you know, what I like to call the shadow energy we no 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 you're not coming to the card reading with those type of feelings this is very serious you're opening up a universal door you're opening up a spiritual door it is very important during card readings to ground yourself use crystals that you trust use incense use grounding materials do not come into readings open like that because again you have to understand as the tarot reader as the reader you need to protect yourself you guys spiritually because the truth is you may never know a quarant that you're reading you may never know the type of energies that they carry with them you may never know what the situation truly is this person could have a spiritual uh, shadow energy around them that they're trying to get rid of there could be a lot of reasons you guys which is why it is so important ground yourself during these these uh you know reading say a little meditation beforehand say a little prayer that you're only going to offer in light and goodness because it protects you as the reader and use the crystals we're going to get into the crystal 101 video in a little bit um you know use some incense use grounding use palo santo use sage because the thing is you guys is if you start to do these readings and invite all of this negativity all of this shadow energy in there we want to do shadow energy work on our own time you're not going to do that with other people around it's too much it's too much for your quarant to put them at risk and too much for yourself to be completely open now my last and final thing about preparing for any type of card readings or spread you guys very very important okay because i know that a lot of these card readings happen at parties right they happen at parties okay you may have some readers 
who are indulging in drink, indulging in some things, and all y'all know what I'm talking about. You guys all know what I'm talking about because you've seen it, right? Here's the thing, as the reader, you cannot get involved in any of that. You as the reader, in my personal opinion, I do not want any psychic medium who is spiritually aware, any type of tarot card reader, drinking while they're reading my cards, um, under the influence of drugs or any type of barbiturates of any kind, because here's the thing. Again, we talk about spirituality. We talk about cleansing. We talk about having a positive energy, you guys. If you go out there like that, you are entering into the universe and the universe is saying, okay, you want to enter in like this? We're going to enter in however we see fit to enter. And that's how you get the dark the shadow energies, you get some energies with tarot card readings that you don't want, some some very, very dark energies. Again, you guys, be smart about it if you are specifically the reader, okay? And if the quarant is so, I'm just going to be honest with you, so inebriated to the point where they're not going to remember this card reading anyway, or who possibly their next potential job can be, do not read for the reader if they are under the influence, you guys. It's common sense. Any tarot card reader will tell you that. Any any spiritual person will tell you that. If you are inebriated or under the influence, please do not do card readings. Do not enter into those type of things because you want to be on your game. You want to be on um, a spiritual level that is a little bit deeper. So please do not do this under the influence, okay? That's just going to be like my PSA for this whole thing. No under the influence, okay? You want to do all of that and make sure the card readings are not specific. If you're also going to have a tarot card reader come into your home during a party, you guys, it would be best to kind of put them into a different room. Again, because as a tarot card reader, there are so many energies around you at any given point. You might have a tarot card reader who's a psychic medium or an empath, and that could be, you know, very distracting to them um, because they're picking up on so many energies. So just if you guys are having a party or something, make sure it's in a separate room where people can just have their cards done and things like that. So those are my pretty much my disclaimers for the card spreads and how to conduct um, readings. Now, I will tell you, you guys, this weekend, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing my Sagittarius birthday zodiac video. All my Sagittarius out there are like, where's our video? We want to see it. Come on, get with the program, Desi. Okay, fine. Um, I will do that this weekend post it. Um, what I'm going to be doing is a couple of different things for the holidays. I am going to be doing holiday pick a card readings. Now, you guys, I have my camera going. I, I'm going to try and work this thing my hardest, okay? Every YouTuber goes through it. I'm no exception here. So I am going to do a holiday pick a card reading. I'm also going to be doing, and you guys guessed it, yes, we're bringing back the holiday terrarium. This time we're going to do a um, Christmas themed terrarium. Now I'm going to give you guys some good ideas if you celebrate Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, if you celebrate something different, if you just want a happy holidays one where I'm going to kind of be giving you guys some ideas with the terrariums. Um, so we're going to make that in a video. I might do um, a different um, type of winter intention spell jar or an intention jar. I might do something different with that in the videos and things of that nature. But as always, remember you guys to keep it light, keep it starry, um, keep it bright, and also subscribe, comment down below, and like this video. It helps me to put out more videos, you guys. Keep in contact with me on Instagram. Um, I'm going to be still posting some cute stuff for Zodiac Christmas stuff on there and for daily card readings. As always, I love all you guys and remember to keep yourself safe when you're doing these card readings and I hope that you have loved the tarot series and I will see you guys soon. Bye.